Hi! Welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm Table. And what a better time to talk about a game about masks than in a global pandemic. Today, we'll be covering Mask Men. It's by Taiki Shinzawa. This is the last week of Taiki Shinzawa month, and I thought it'd be fun to have him come on the show. So, welcome, Taiki Shinzawa. I couldn't find a picture of him online, so this is the closest I got. Just a random person. Uh, what's that? Oh, it's a digital photo. They don't need to wear a mask. But maybe you'd feel safer. Yeah, could you? Thanks. The hook to Mask Man is it is a shedding game. You want to get rid of your cards as quick as possible, but you don't know the strength of your cards at the start. It's kind of determined over the course of the game. I'll have to explain a little bit more about this, so join me at the table. The Masked Man deck is 60 cards made up of 6 suits with 10 cards each. To set up, you would deal out cards to each player depending on player count. At 2 and 3, you deal out 15 cards to each player and set aside the rest. At 4, 5, and 6, you deal out the 60 card deck equally to each player. Additionally, you would have nearby these markers that help determine the strength of a certain wrestler over the course of a season. Also, you would have the score counters that players are trying to earn over the course of the game. In Massman, players are trying to shed out their cards as quickly as possible. The game is played over four seasons, or hands. A season ends when all but one player has shedded out their cards. Points are awarded by how quickly a player sheds out their hand. If the player is first, they will get two points. Second gets one point, and then last, no matter the player count, will get minus one point. There are a few rules of how you can play cards in Maskman. At the start of a round, when you're trying to introduce wrestlers, you can only play one card of that wrestler. So let's say that Wartrolder here wanted to introduce purple. They could only play one card in purple, and then they would take that chip and put it out here to start the strength hierarchy. After the start player has played a card, subsequent players always have the option to just pass. If you pass, you're out of the round, and you can't play until the next round. However, let's say Power Ranger wants to play, so they look at their cards. Since Purple's the only one introduced, and everyone else hasn't been introduced, to introduce them, you have to prove that they're stronger than Purple. How you prove that a certain wrestler is stronger is you play one more than the card that was played. So for in this example, Purple has one card played. And so let's say Power Ranger plays these two pink. So they'll play the two pink, they'll take the pink marker and put it above, because what's this saying is that pink is stronger than purple. Now looking at the frog's hand, they can always pass, but say they wanted to play three gray, because since pink is strength two, you have to play one more card than pink. So frog would play three gray. They but then put the gray marker on the top of pink. In Massman, you can never play more than three cards. So if it were to go to War Turtle and they wanted to play four of a new wrestler, they couldn't. So that means that the round ends right away. You take these cards and you put them in, kind of off to the side, communal discard, and then since Frog played the last cards, Frog would lead at the next round. So now it's Frog's turn. Let's say, Frog decides to play. So since purple has already been introduced, they can play as many purple cards as they want. So let's say they play three, because you can play one, two, or three. So how it works is, since it's a climbing game, War Total has to play either three of pink or gray to this round. So it looks like they don't have that, so they'll pass. Then it goes to Power Ranger. They have three gray. So they can play three gray. Now since going to frog, you can't play four cards, and all they could do in this situation is play four cards of anyone introduced. Since they can't, because gray is at the highest, this ends immediately and Power Ranger would have won. Now we would clean up this trick, and Power Ranger would win. Similar to playing three, Power Ranger could have just played one purple. So now when it comes to the frog, they can play one pink. And War Turtle, if they wanted to, 
or if they had, they could play one gray. However, since they don't, they're actually going to start mixing things up. Let's say that they play two orange. So, looking at this example, we know that pink is weaker than orange. So we'll take the orange token and we'll put it above pink. Since the round can keep going because someone could play three cards that are higher than orange, it actually goes to Power Ranger. So let's say they play these three blue. So now we know that pink is weaker than both orange and blue. So since no one can play four to determine what's stronger than blue, this ends around and it goes to Power Ranger again. You clean up the cards and they would start the next round. Let's say they started with just one purple. Now let's say the frog plays one gray. Coming to War Turtle now, they can play two green. So what this means is, since purple and gray are both below green, you can just slide this down and put green right below them both. So we kind of have this hierarchy going here. Now comes the Power Ranger. So since this is known and this is unknown, we know that pink is at this level, but we actually don't know where orange and blue are compared to gray and green. So since Power Ranger has a bunch of orange, they can play three of these orange cards and prove that green is weaker than orange. So now what happens is since green is weaker than orange, we actually know this. We can put this back. Because orange was stronger than green, and green was stronger than all these, and blue was stronger than orange, we now have our tree sorted out. Now in this scenario, while three orange was played, we actually know that blue is stronger than orange. So three blue can still be played. So then it goes to the frog. They were close, but no cigar. So they have to pass. And then going to War Turtle, they have to pass. So Power Ranger won this one. They'll discard the cards, and then they'll play their last two orange. And even though the trick isn't over, they would have won two points for being the first to shut out. So since a uh, season doesn't end until only one person has cards left, it goes to the frog. So now the frog can play two blue, because they know that blue is stronger than orange. So since nothing can beat that, they'll just discard the cards, and then they'll play, and let's say they play one purple. Going to War Turtle now, let's say they play one pink. And now, tur Frog can play green, War Turtle can play orange. They're out of cards, right? because they don't have any blue, so they'll pass, and it'll go to War Turtle. So now War Turtle can play three purple. Frog doesn't have that, so they'll pass. Those get discarded. War Turtle will now play three green. Don't have that, they'll pass. War Turtle will now play one pink. Now, let's say Frog plays an orange. They don't have a blue. Frog plays their last two pink, and now they are second out. War Turtle will take the last place, and they are now going to be the lead for the next season. You would shuffle all the cards, deal out them back to each player. The hierarchy actually resets. So these would all go back to be determined in the next season. Let's look at an example of how things can go a little crazy in this game, however. So let's say it's the second season, and War Turtle played green, which Power Ranger followed by pink, and then Frog played purple. So we have this nice, simple tree here. You would collect all the cards, and now Frog would lead the next season. So let's say Frog starts with one blue. This is a new wrestler here. And now War Turtle can play two orange to prove that orange is stronger than blue. 
And now finally, we can see that Power Ranger can play three gray. So now we actually have two completely separate trees in the first two hands. So if we clean this up and we have Power Ranger play at the start of the next hand, perhaps one blue, let's say Frog played two pink. So here's where things can get a little crazy. So there's a couple different methods you could do because they give you multiple markers. You can just start a new tree. So maybe blue and pink, and then when it finally comes over here and more total plays three orange, you can just do this. Some people like this because then it simplifies it a little bit. Some people also like to just combine trees as you go. So this is what was just played, right? So looking here, we know that blue is under pink. So now blue would go below pink. We don't know if blue is stronger or weaker than green, however. So we put it side by side. Now we know that orange is stronger than pink. So we move orange above pink. We don't know if orange is weaker or stronger than purple. So we actually just put it side by side. So you can have multiple trees if that helps, or kind of this amalgamation of like a branching tree structure as well. Now, let's say since War Turtle won, well, not technically, because Power Ranger, if they had three gray, they could have played, but they didn't. So they pass. And oh, okay. So Frog plays three gray, they win. So now let's say the next round, because you can always like just put these away just to clean it up. Let's say frog plays two blue. So when it comes to war turtle now, they can either play any of something that's known to be stronger. So two of either pink or orange or green or purple. So they can play these two pink. Or since blue and green are still unsure of like who's stronger, you can play three green and solidify the pecking order. And things always keep going. So now if Power Ranger wanted to, they could play three pink. And then, I mean, Frog doesn't have any, <laughs> doesn't have three, so they'd have to pass. But so things would keep going. So potentially playing three orange or three purple or three gray. Fast forward to the end of the game, you just count up all the points and whoever has the most is the winner. If there's a tie, then you count up who has the most two place. And if there's still a tie, shared victory. In a two player game, the scoring is a little different. How it works is when one player sheds out, they get a point. Then you start a new season. And it goes until one player has three points. Here's a quick example of how the scoring works in a four, five, or six player game. The first person to go out will get the two as normal. The second player will get the one as normal. But let's say uh, Frog was the third person to go out, they just wouldn't get a chip, and then the last player would get a minus one. So at five or six, there's just more people who just don't get chips, but the last player always gets this minus one and then would lead the next round. And that is Mask Men. This is an amazing game. I love the production. The suit design is super clear. You can just kind of splay your cards out just a little bit, see a little bit of the color and know exactly what you have in your hand. The chips for the masks and the scoring belts are amazing. The box size itself is a little tough to fit all the components in, but it totally works. It's the perfect size. The gameplay itself, I could understand it's a little tough to wrap your head around how it works and understand people sometimes saying it's a little fiddly, trying to move things around, but I love the fact that the hierarchy isn't set and you, when you look at your hands right at the start, you just have so much possibility. I definitely like this at lower player counts where you can have that space to build the tree and have some agency in that, but it is still fun at higher player counts. It's more of a tactical game for sure, but the idea of everyone combining and contributing to this tree is such a rad idea. It's so cool to watch it come together. I love the agency in the game when you would have, say, four or even five of a card in your hand. And you know, especially at the start, if you're trying to determine the strength, playing three, you're really setting it high, but then you only have one more left. And it's almost fun to watch other people 
set the strength that works for you. And then you have a ton of cards still, so you don't have to waste a lot of your cards. Setting, especially your higher cards, setting your wrestler that you have a lot of higher up on the rank. But then if you wait and it doesn't go well and they're super low, then you're sit sitting there with a bunch of cards <laughs> that are just worth nothing, pretty much. I think this game does get into crazy scenarios. I've seen some videos online where people try to break down complex mask men hierarchy. And I've always found it to be straightforward. I love it, actually. I love that deducing what the strength is. The availability on this is great. You can find this on a lot of stores online, or I've seen it at friendly local games shops. Oink sells them on their website. It's, it's pretty universal. So that is Mask Men. I love this game so much. I want to give it the award for top trick taker. Is it a trick taker though? Yes? No? I don't know. Give it a give it a new make a new shedding award. Okay. End of Taiki Shinzawa month. I'm sure we'll cover games from him in the future, but thanks for watching.